All right. So that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. And, and then I wanted to talk about one other uh, kind of tricksy and fun thing that we might want to use in our sliders. So let's go ahead and look at a slider again. Good old handy dandy slider. I want to make this a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and make it uh, 200 by 40. And let's view that. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, I know that I'm going to put in for the panel, I'm going to add a background that's called BG. It's not there yet, but it will be soon. And what I'm after is I would really love for this slider to have a color that moved up and down with it. So I had a sense of like, you know, how close to 100% was I. So let's look at how we might do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll just quickly review how we did some of that rearranging to get our slider to look the way that we wanted to here in class today, right? Uh, so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to middle mouse click here. I'm going to grab a math, right? I create a little fork there in that process. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the height of this by two because I want it to shrink by one on either side. I'm going to come out here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and fix this other element. I'm going to justify the vertical to be center. Good, that sticks it right in the middle. Then remember what I want to do is I just have to rescale what's going on here um, so that those things work right. Okay, so to do that in our range function, 0 to 1, because that's what's coming out of the slider, is going to stay the same. And my 2 range is going to be 1. And then I've got to write a little bit of a fancy expression here for all of this. So I'm going to look at me parent. I'm going to look at my parent's parameter called width. And from that I'm going to subtract the operator called knob. And out of knob I would like the parameter whoa, called w, width again. And in this case I'm going to add one to that because I want to kind of offset it. Okay. So far, so good. 194, 1, but it still doesn't look like it's behaving right. That's because we have one last step to fix here. So I've got to change my expression over here. Instead of being the default expression here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to ask to look at the operator called math1. And out of math1, I want the thing called v1. Okay, so now that's looking pretty good, right? Sticks at the top, sticks at the bottom. I've got this nice little border. Okay, so how could I take advantage of drawing something that filled in this space here um, in a way that was close to what I wanted? Well, we'll look at two different ways that we might do that um, because both of the, these ways are fine approaches and might work for different kinds of scenarios that you have. So the first thing that we're going to do is we'll try this method. We're going to go ahead and make a container. And we're going to set this container's properties um, to be the width of its parent, right? Me, parent, parameter width. Excellent. And uh, we're going to change, we're going to set its height to be the same to me, parent, parameter height. Okay. And let's just for a second go ahead and change this color. Uh, let's make it bright red for right now. And let's turn the opacity, the background, all the way up just so we can see what that looks like. Okay. That looks like it broke something for us. So what's going on? Some all sorts of funky things are happening. So we've got to make a couple adjustments. But I can see that I'm kind of on to the right track here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remember that I want its width, uh, or its height rather, I want to subtract 2 from that, right? Because I would like it still to do that thing. Oh, much better. All right, so part of what's going on here is I've got a little bit of a conflict happening, uh, right? Because I've got this uh, situation where I'm drawing this guy, I'm drawing two containers inside of here, and I can't quite get to the one that I want to. So let's go ahead and change the size of this one. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and this time we're going to take advantage. Whoa, we're going to try not to delete our whole network. Uh, we're going to take advantage of the same thing that we already have built. And we're going to grab math1. And out of math1, we're going to grab v1. 
Excellent. Now, when we back out here, we should see that we can kind of slide that with us here. Okay, that's pretty groovy. And then I also want to like clip off the bottom here a little bit, right? I want to kind of reduce that uh, a skosh. So what I might do is I might subtract two here, right? That's going to look familiar. Let's kind of make sure we can see both sides of this. All right, well that added that uh, subtracted the two for us right there so that's that doesn't seem quite right so how do we fix that well what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and here in the axis we're going to bump it up one so we've just kind of scooted it over a little bit here all right and now let's actually just subtract one here there it goes so now we've got this guy uh, that moves with our slider we've got a kind of like color gauge that moves with it we might even want to come in here and take the opacity here and turn it down a little bit so it's not quite so intense because the other element that we're going to want to add is let's go ahead and drop in our good friend the text top this should look familiar we're going to drop in a table dat also we're going to go ahead and get rid of this we'll call this slider one we're going to call this BG. We know that it's going to be the wrong size. That's all right. We can fix that. Me parent par W. And then we're going to do the same thing for height here. Let's go ahead and turn down that font size just a little bit. OK. So now with this opacity turned down a little bit, I can still read that as it hovers over the top. Okay, so that is one very sassy way that we might solve this problem. But you might say, you know, Matt, I really would love a different way to solve this problem um, because I'm not quite satisfied with that. And I would say, well, you know, that seems legitimate. Um, I love other ways to solve problems. So how, how might we solve this in a different way? So let's go ahead and let's imagine a scenario where we're going to draw a rectangle. I think this will work. Who knows? We'll try it, right? Uh, and I'd like the rectangle to have the dimensions of my parent, me, parent, parameter, width. And I want it to have the height also. For the record, I haven't tried this yet, so I'm not totally sure if this is going to work uh, the way that we expect, but mm, we'll see. I hope that it will. I should be able to connect these two right together. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let's just disable this for a second. Oh, and it's going to stay there. Hmm. We're just going to cut it and paste it up here, and it will be unhappy for a little bit. That's fine. Okay, so here in our rectangle, let's go ahead and turn down the fill color a little bit. Right? All right, there we go. We can see that we're kind of We've got a little color action happening there. And let's adjust the size based on uh, our math over here again, right? And so we're going to go ahead and switch from uh, using uh, fraction aspect as a method for determining the size here. And we're going to go back to actual pixels. All right. And uh, the, for the pixels for this, uh, let's go ahead and drop in our same reference here, me parent par width and we're going to copy that Oops, for height and now we're going to make some changes. Okay, so I want this thing to stay the same height, excellent, but I would like it to change its uh, width a little bit, right? I want its width to be this guy right here. So let's see what happens if instead we try doing this. Math 1, and in our Math 1, let's ask for the thing called V1. Mm, and, okay, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. That's not totally what I wanted, uh, but that does do a very curious thing, right? All right, so part of that is telling us that the center of this guy lives right in the middle here. All right, what if we made the center of this um, like at negative 
Okay. That's closer to what I want. Uh, right? Okay. So, you know, looking at this, I'm wondering... Hmm. Huh. Maybe this is not the best way to solve this particular kind of problem, right? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> What else might we do to solve this particular conundrum? I know. What if we were to do this? What if we were instead to say, you know what, let's try me parent par width and height. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that right back at the center there. Okay, so it's drawing the same size. And now what I want to do is, what if I instead was to translate this, right? What if I was to actually move it uh, based on what was going on here? So all the way over here, right, this is zero. And this is going to be probably negative one, okay. What if I, you know, what if I just switch this around? What if I called this uh, pixels instead? Okay, this is great to know. At pixels, I can see that this is still the center position. All right, we could work with that. Uh, we might do something tricky here, right? Let's go back to fraction. And so at zero here, which is all the way over here to the right, um, is this guy. And then at negative one, that's down here. Okay. Well, I happen to know that we have a value already here in this uh, out one that's similar to that, right? Um, so we might just go ahead, and in this situation, we could use another math to invert our range. So 0 to 1 is now going to be 1 to 0. It's going to move the opposite direction. And what if we grab that and use that for our rectangle here to translate our center? We'll see. Oh, interesting. That's not totally what I want. Mm, right, because I want to go to negative 1. All right, so range is going to be negative 1. Oops, negative 1 to 0. There it is. All right, so here's a totally different way of solving this problem. And you might say, Matt, that is such trash. Why would I even do it that way? That's going to be so much harder. And I would say, poof, boy, golly, you are right. It's not nearly as easy as the other one. Um, but what if we were to rearrange this? All right, so let's disconnect these guys. Let's add in a composite top. And we'll go ahead and connect these two together. Let's uh, change this from being BG to call it text. And we should get a little pop-up window that says, hey, you're changing a thing, and it's got relationships, and what do you want to do about that? And I'm going to say, you know what, don't do anything right now. Leave things broken. I'm going to rename this guy over here. So I've just renamed this thing to BG, which is the thing that goes back here. Aha, now here is something very interesting, right? So using this uh, multiply operation, uh, what I'm ending up with, and let's go ahead and turn this, um, the rectangle's opacity all the way up. So now I'm kind of erasing uh, the label for this as I go by. That's, that's an interesting kind of choice. What if we were to pick a different color? OK, so now, ooh, ooh, that's kind of fun. I like that. Uh, we might do add instead. This has got a totally different kind of feeling, right? So the reason that I might choose this method of working is going to be purely kind of an aesthetic choice, how I'm wanting to um, kind of understand how this thing works and looks. And, you know, this is, uh, at the end of the day, a choice that you get to make, right? This gets to be um, a, a decision that you make about how you want your interface to look uh, and how efficient you want it to be. This might not be, well, you know, for control panels, the size that we're dealing with and the number of sliders and buttons that we're dealing with, this is going to be a fine, a fine way to work. Now, one notable thing to, to consider here is that since we're using this 
composite top, this has got a transform that's built right into it also. Uh, so in terms of our our composite, uh, we might be able to do some of this transform that we're doing over here because we're moving the center of this thing left and right. We might think about how we do that over here in our background or in our composite top instead um, for another day, right? So here just here's another way to think about how you can use color to inform what's going on here inside of your network. I don't know that this would be my choice in terms of how I would build it. I might stick with the uh, component method um, just because that looks a little bit cleaner to me. But, you know, to each their own, and you should program the interface that you want to make. All right, thanks for spending some time with me, guys, and I can't wait to see what you make.